In this video, we'll build a Discord bot that can create polls for the users in a server to participate. Anyone can create a poll by using the create poll command with the title of the poll, the question of the poll, the options and a countdown value after which the poll ends. Users will then be able to participate in the poll by reacting to the message. And once the poll ends, the results will be displayed in a new message. It's a simple bot and a perfect project if it's your first time creating a Discord bot. We'll be making use of Python and an API wrapper module for Discord called discord.py which supports asynchronous processing and this is going to make our life a lot easier. Before starting this video, a quick thanks to the sponsors who made this video possible, Altahost. More about them later in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. We'll first start by logging into Discord developer portal and create a new application. Once created, I will go ahead and add a bot to my application. We also need to enable some intents based on the requirements of our bot. Intents allow our bot to receive information about certain events that occur in the server, like when a member sends a message in a channel. In this case, we'll enable the server members intent and the message content intent. Next, we also need to give a set of permissions to our bot so that it will be able to carry out various events. So I'll go to OAuth2, select the authorization method as in-app authorization and select both the scopes bot and application dot commands. I'll set the permissions as administrator so that the bot will be able to do any kind of operation on the server. And that's about configuring the bot on the Discord developer portal. In order to invite this bot to my server, I'll go to the URL generator, select bot under scopes and administrator under permissions. This generates a link and if I paste this link into my browser, I can now select the server to which I want to invite my bot and when I click authorize, the bot joins my server. Great, now let's start coding. I'll first start by copying the bot's token and paste it into my code. Make sure that you keep your token safe because if it gets compromised, anyone can take control of your bot. So keep it real secure. Next, I'll define the required intents and create a client object with these intents. Finally, I'll say client.run and pass in my bot's token. And that's it. We now created a Discord bot, but it doesn't have any functionality yet. Let's fix that. The first task is to listen for the create poll command from the users. To do that, I'll create an asynchronous function called onMessage that gets triggered every time a message is sent on any channel in the server. This function takes the message object as the input parameter. We check if the message content starts with exclamation create underscore poll. And if it does, we extract the parameters from the command, which are the poll name, the poll question, the poll options, and the countdown value in minutes. I also added some validation to make sure that these parameters are in the expected format, like none of them are empty, poll name is not longer than 15 characters, number of options are not less than one and not greater than five, and so on. So if any of these parameters are not valid, or in other words, if they are not in the expected format, we send the appropriate error as the message. And if there is no error in validation, we send the message that contains the actual poll. After the poll message is sent, we also want the bot to initially react with certain emojis so that users will be able to participate in the poll by reacting with these certain emojis. I'll use the add reaction function to add reactions to the send message with these set of emojis. So now if I run my code and send a message with the create poll command, I get a response back from the bot if there is any error. If there is no error, the bot sends the poll message and also adds some reactions to the message with the set of allowed emojis. Cool, but it's not fully complete because if the user reacts with any emoji other than the ones allowed, the bot must immediately remove it. So let's go ahead and write the logic for this. First, I'll save the message ID of the poll message that the bot sent into a global list because we will be needing it later. I'll now create an on raw reaction add function that gets triggered every time a new reaction is made to any message in the server. This function takes the payload as the input from which we can extract different information that we need, like the emoji of the reaction, the message on which the reaction is made, 
etc etc. We'll first extract the member object from the payload which corresponds to the member who made that particular reaction. We then extract the message object corresponding to that reaction and check if this message is the same as the one that bot sent. That is, if it is a poll message. We can do this by just comparing the message IDs as we already have the message IDs of the messages that the bot sent in a global list. We then check if the reaction made is in the set of allowed emojis. And if it's not, we just remove the reaction with the remove reaction function call by passing the emoji to be removed and the member object. We also cannot let the same user to make more than one reaction because a user cannot choose more than one options in the poll. This is fairly simple to do as well. Just enumerate through the message reactions and for each reaction, check if that particular user already reacted with that emoji. And if they already made a reaction, they simply cannot make any more reactions. So we simply remove the new reaction with the remove reaction function call. And that's it. Now, if I make a reaction with any other emoji that's not allowed, it gets removed immediately by the bot. Also, if I make more than one reaction, the later gets removed. Perfect. Well, almost perfect. There's still one thing I have to do, and that is to display a countdown once the poll message is posted. This countdown is made possible by just editing the message for every one second and updating the value of the number of minutes and seconds left. And there's a very easy way of doing this with discord.py by making use of tasks loop. Basically, you can define a function with a tasks.loop decorator and set an interval for x seconds so that this function runs every x seconds. In our case, this function should run every one second. So inside this function, I'll calculate the remaining time by subtracting the countdown value, which is in seconds, from the current UTC time, which is also in seconds. Next, I convert the resulting time, which is also in seconds, into minutes and seconds so that it's easier for users to read. I then go ahead and update or edit the message by adding the current left time to it. Just to note, all the other content of the poll message stays the same, but only the countdown value is updated. I add another condition for when the countdown expires. And when this happens, it means our poll must be ended and the results must be posted. So I once again go ahead and enumerate all the reactions of the message with the message.reactions call and count the number of times each emoji is reacted and also count the total number of reactions made to the poll message. I then calculate the percentage with these two values and craft a results message to show these calculated results and finally send it. Oh, and I'll also delete the original poll message so that users will not be able to react to it. Or in other words, participate in the poll once it has already ended. So I'll use the delete function call to delete the message. And let's see if the bot works now i first give the command to create a poll the bot now creates the poll and sends a message it also initially reacts with the allowed set of emojis users can now react to vote and all the illegal reactions will be automatically removed and you can also see that the countdown value is being updated in real time so it looks really cool and once the countdown ends the bot posts the poll results and also deletes the original poll message so that users will not be able to react to it anymore. And that's about it. There is our bot working perfectly as it should. So the final thing is to make sure that the bot keeps running 24 by seven because obviously bots are supposed to be online all the time. That's kind of one of their purposes. I can make this possible with the magic of cloud computing. In other words, I can rent a VPS, which stands for virtual private server, which is basically like your own computer on the internet that is always turned on and always connected to the internet. So I'll just rent a VPS, import the code I've written into this VPS and deploy my bot there. So now I do not have to keep my personal computer on all the time, but the bot will still be online all the time because it is running on the cloud. Now, there are a lot of providers that offer cloud services like AWS, Google Cloud, DigitalOcean, etc., etc. But these are a little expensive. Obviously, these are big companies, so there is a branding aspect to them and you just have to pay a little extra to use their services. But what if I tell you, you don't have to. You can get the same reliability and speeds, but for a much lesser price by making use of a cloud provider known as AltaHost. 
with full root access to your VPS, SSD, NVMe disk drives that make the processing even faster and 99.99% uptime, AltaHost is going to be my perfect choice. It also gives you an unlimited bandwidth, meaning that there are no limits to the amount of traffic that your VPS can get. There are also other features like daily backup so that you never lose your data by accident or by a programming error. And more importantly, it is also very safe and secure. So in this case, I'm going to go with the VPS hosting and the most basic plan that they have is five and a half dollars per month, which is literally cheaper than your Netflix subscription. You can get one CPU core, one GB RAM, 30 gigs of NVMe SSD storage, a managed server and one IPv4 dedicated address. These specs are more than enough for my bot to run, so I'm just gonna go ahead with this plan. I'll leave the link to AltaHost in the description below so you can go ahead and check them out. They also offer other cloud services like shared hosting, which is even more cheaper, WordPress hosting, Windows hosting, etc, etc. So go ahead and check them out. So I have created an account on AltaHost and logged in. I'll go to services, order a new service and I'll select the Linux VPS hosting. Choose the basic plan. I'll select the location as New Delhi, India. Operating system, I'll go with Ubuntu 22.04. I'll leave the rest of the options as they are and then order my service. And that's it. I now have myself a Linux computer on the cloud. I'll go ahead and start it. Once it's started, I'll go to the server information and there is a unique IP address that is assigned to me and a randomly generated password. With these details, I can log in to my VPS via SSH. You can use any SSH client, but I'll use Mobile Xterm because it is simple to use. I'll create a new SSH session with my IP address as the remote host and the username would be root. It then prompts me to enter the password and after I do that, I am now logged in to my Linux virtual private server. So here, I'll just import my code using the drag and drop feature that Mobile Xterm offers and then I'll install the requirements with pip and the bot is now ready to be executed. We'll create a systemd service to manage the bot. In order to do this, just create a .service file under etc slash systemd slash system. And inside this file, enter the user who runs this bot. In this case, it would be root, the working directory of the bot, the exec start command which starts the bot, and the standard output and standard error files to where you want the bot to write. And then we'll set restart equal to always so that the bot automatically restarts in case it gets terminated due to any issue. Now save the file, reload the daemons and finally start the service with systemctl start followed by your service name. And voila, the bot is now running and you can also see that it is online on my Discord server. Great, so now users can create polls and also participate in them and the bot will always be available because it is running on cloud. If you want to check out the code for this project, I'll leave a link in the description to the GitHub repository, so go ahead and check it out if you are interested. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked this video, I hope you learned something new. If you did, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below and also leave a comment in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video, until then, cheers.